Hello. So today's New York Times Hard Sudoku uh, for July 11th had a fun technique in it that you do not have to use. Uh, you can solve the entire puzzle without finding this, but I thought this would be a nice opportunity to describe how certain a certain advanced technique works that I think is a really fun one. Uh, so this technique is called the pseudocock, which is named after the username of the person who first described it. Um, it's not a great name, but <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of fun. I don't know. Anyway. Um, to do that, uh, you just need to load up the current New York Times puzzle. Um, I have a link in the description uh, if you want to pull it up in Sudoku Pad. And you just need to pencil all of row four and all of box five. Uh, we just pencil center mark it with the possible digits that are still left based on just the gibbons that see things. So this is just a, a really naive penciling of these cells. And then you just need to find one thing, which is that this cell here is a naked single two. So um, you can see it sees a one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need to we need to find this two first. But that's that's all you need to find. There, I mean, there's a lot to find in this puzzle. In fact, you could find everything in this puzzle and solve it, and then never have to use this. But my point is, I want to I want to show you how this works because I think it's really neat. So we're going to be focusing on these two cells here, and let me make those green, and specifically how they work against this row and this box. So the point is that we're going to be finding, uh, in this case, a pair in this row and a triple in this box that have to occur based on these green cells. So let's take this from the start. We want to kind of split up. The, the, thing, the thing that we're noticing first is that we have this nice 6-8 um, cell here. And then down here, I'll make them blue. We have the uh, blue is hard to see with the blue, isn't it? I'll make it orange. Um, we have these two orange cells down here, which are both 3, 4, 9. So this 6, 8 would be a 6, 8 pair if there was another 6, 8 in the row. And this 3, 4, 9 would be a 3, 4, 9 triple if there was another 3, 4, 9 in the box. But if we look at the green cells here, that makes us think, well, okay, we're going to have to segment these green cells because these green cells are only made up of 6, 8 and 3, 4, 9. There's not another digit in these cells. That's important. And so we can kind of segment this and say, well, Green can't be both 6, 8, right? We can't eliminate 3, 4, and 9 from both of these cells because if they were both 6, 8, it breaks our row. We'd have three cells with 6, 8. So that's not going to work. So they can't both be 6, 8. But that doesn't mean that one of them has to be 6, 8. But we can prove that via these two. So if these green cells were not 6, 8, then you can see that we would have four cells in box 5 that need to be 3, 4, 9. And that also isn't going to work. We're going to run out of digits. So the, the conclusion we can make is that one of these green cells needs to be a 6, 8, and one of them needs to be a 3, 4, 9. We've essentially cut the possible digits in half and said one of these greens has to be from one of those halves, and the other green has to be from the other half. So we don't know which is which, but maybe this one would be from 6, 8, and maybe this one would be from 3, 4, 9, for example. And you can see that if that were to happen, we would have a 6, 8 pair in the row, and we would have a 3, 4, 9 triple in the box. And if you swap them, you'd still have the same thing. If this was the 3, 4, 9, and this was the 6, 8, we're ignoring, you know, it would be a 3, 9, but it's not important. We'd, we'd have a, we'd still have a 6, 8 pair in the row, and we'd have a 3, uh, 4, 9 triple in the box. So we can actually use that pair and that triple. Uh, let me go all the way back. <laughs> Sorry, get all the digits back. There we go. So we can use the 6, 8 pair in the row, eliminating both 6 and 8 from anywhere that isn't colored here. So these both can't be 6, 8. And I'll deal with this 1, 9 pair in a second. But at the same time, we can say, well, there's also a 3, 4, 9 triple in the box using these. And so we can remove 3, 4, and 9, specifically the 9s, from both of these cells. And from here, we get this 1, 9 pair, which allows us to remove 1 and 9 from all of these cells. And uh, yeah, that, that makes for a really nice start to the puzzle. You get, you get seeded with some good stuff that you wouldn't have otherwise had. And uh, from here, it, it, it may actually just be singles. Like, I don't think you have to find anything else. You find the pseudocock, and you find the 1-9 pair, and, and the rest should solve with hidden and naked singles. So uh, I think that's a really neat demonstration of that technique and how you can think about it. Um, it can clue you in that there's probably a pseudocock. Let me go back before we did the eliminations. What can clue you in is we can actually do a geometric argument here, a coloring argument. If I just take this cell as purple, 
and I say, okay, well, purple is going to be a six or an eight. We don't know which one, but obviously this cell in the solution is going to be a six or an eight, and we'll just call that purple. We don't know what that is. But then we can ask the question, where does purple go in this box? Well, purple can't repeat in the row, and three, four, nine can't be purple because we know purple is six or eight. Therefore, purple is going to end up in one of these two cells, making one of these a six, eight. Um, and if you can, you can actually fairly easily eliminate the six from this cell um, and prove that this has to be six, eight, which we did prove with the pseudococ. Notice how the pseudococ did a lot more than that, though. But you can also say, um, yeah, if you can eliminate the six, then you can say, well, this has to be purple, so it's a six. Sorry, <laughs> oops, I meant to remove the nine. So it, it, it's the it's not only six eight; it's the same six eight as this one. But then you look in the box and you say, well, the other six eight is going to be in one of these two. We could call that green. So whatever whatever um, the other six eight is. If this is six, then we're talking about eight. If this is eight, we're talking about six. We're going to call that green. And in this box, green can only be here. And again, this does require to you know, to eliminate this six first which I don't remember how it's eliminated, but um, now that we know that green is one of these two, you can actually see in the row that we that allows us to eliminate 6, 8 from the rest of the row because we got that virtual pair. But doing it, doing it via the pseudococ, you get all those eliminations all at once. And the only thing you don't technically you know get for free from the pseudococ is that these two cells are the same digit as each other, but you can figure that out pretty easily because you know that this is a 6, 8 pair and you know that this is a 6-8 pair you know, with, with the virtual 6-8 that you don't know where it ends up. And so then, therefore, these two have to be the same via, via the medium of this 6-8. So cool. I thought I would show that off. Um, hopefully that was interesting to you. And um, that's kind of one way you can spot it. Like it, it hints you that you should be looking for it in that we had this cell here that couldn't be down here. Like there were a couple cells in this box that it couldn't be. And so that kind of hints you that this is going to have to maybe get split up and maybe you found a pseudococ so you do more eliminations not the easiest technique in the world to spot but it does only involve one row and one box and so compared to some other techniques that are more global like this is one of the few advanced techniques um that can get you a bunch of eliminations that only happen that that, that are happen within only one band or one stack like um a true x-wing for example has to be in four boxes right so it can't be all in one band or one stack uh um you can find an, uh, a Y-wing within one band or stack. You can find, but like something like a skyscraper can't be within one band or one stack. So most advanced techniques are going to be more global, but this is a neat one because you only have to focus on one row and one box to understand it, and you can get a bunch of eliminations. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, then why don't leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below. Mm -hmm.